He that winneth souls is wise. He that winneth souls is wise. Let the church say amen and God bless you. Coming back once again with another little word for the day. He that winneth souls is wise. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible also is Proverbs 11 and 30. It tells us that the fruit of the righteous is a what? Tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. But I want to ask a few questions in this video. Do we really care about the dope dealer? Do we really reach out to the homeless man, the drunk man? Do we really care about the prostitute lady? Do we really care about the homosexuals and the lesbians? Do we care about the liars and the cheaters and all the people that's committing adultery? Are we reaching out to them? See, the thing is that most people spend so much time bashing on people and downing them, but... They never reach out to them. Now, let's just be for real because some people are going to change and some are not. And then some are right there. they fighting with their addiction and they trying their best to get delivered. But my question is, have we even reached out to them? Or are we just talking about them? Some people are so selfish. They want to be the only one to make it into heaven because they done got so-called so saved now and that. Oh, they're the only one going to make it in. They're not concerned about their brothers and their sisters. You know one time Apostle Paul stayed up all the way from the morning to the evening concerned about his brethren. But he that went it souls is wise. Let me say he or she that went it souls is wise because some people only think that, oh, a woman can't do nothing. A woman can't spread the gospel. Well, let me say this. If JT was strung out and I'm searching for help, all over. Do you think I'm going to curse a man or a woman? If it's a woman that come up to me and reach out to me and tell me about the goodness of God, do you think I'm going to turn that woman away? Let the church say amen. The Bible says your sons and daughters will. What? I'm going to let y'all Bible study us. Y'all y'all finish that sentence for me, but not to jump off into all that. The, the problem nowadays is that so many people want you to just come to my church. Oh, you got to come hear my pastor preach. Oh, he can hoop and holler. He can sing. You got to come hear our choir. You got to come to Bible study and this and that. Okay, that's all fine and dandy, but are we leading people to the building or are we leading, are we leading them to Christ? Y'all about to make me preach. He that wins souls is wise. Not he that winneth mess. Not he that is envy or jealous of his brother and sister. It's he that winneth souls is wise. A lot of people winning mess right now. Paul said we need to press toward the mark, toward the prize of the higher calling, but most people are pressing toward mess, foolishness. People are pressing toward religion, not relationship. People are concerned about all this other stuff, speaking in tongues and running around a church and laying hands on people and shouting, but are they concerned about salvation and showing others the way? So you can speak in tongue, you can shout, you can pay your tithes and your offering, and you can do all this stuff and wind up missing heaven. If you think I'm lying, study the word of God very closely. He that winneth souls is wise. I can see Brother Mitty Man reaching out. I can see P.P. Drawings reaching out. I can see Sister Deborah. I can see Sister Catherine. I can see Lady D. I can see all of y'all, Sister Lisa. I see all of y'all, K-Ray, y'all reaching out to others, and you're doing it outside of the building. I can see Sister Maria when she do her videos. She's not stuck on the church building. But most people are just stuck on the building. I believe this scripture was by King Solomon. And I could be wrong, but in my spiritual mind, I believe that this was King Solomon. And let me teach this right because Solomon didn't ask God for wisdom. Uh-oh, I'm messing up now. God Asked Solomon, what was it that he wanted? He said he wanted an understanding heart. Let me teach this right. He wanted an understanding heart because he knew he was going to be a leader and he needed to know how to lead these people, the children of Israel, and he wanted an understanding heart. So God gave him wisdom and gave him everything that he needed. He blessed Solomon so hard, even though we saw where Solomon fell at times, just like his father, King David, did. But God still used him. Proverbs 10 and 11 teaches us that the mouth of the righteous is a fountain of life, but violence 
overwhelms the mouth of the wicked. So a lot of people say words don't hurt. Yes, they do. Whoever made that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but, but words can never hurt, I guarantee you, they ain't never read the book of James and talk about taming the tongue. See, we all supposed to be doing some type of ministering to somebody. No, we, we, we wasn't all called to be a pastor, a bishop, or an evangelist, or all of this, these titles, but we all should be preaching to each other, to the lost. How are you going to reach the lost if you're not going after them? So many people in the church, and when the pastor asks the question, we all are saved, ain't we? Everybody hand goes up. Yes, pastor, everybody in the church is saved. Oh, hallelujah, praise the Lord. Well, if we all in the church are saved on the building, inside of the building, why ain't nobody going outside of the building? Why is it the outreach ministry ain't reaching out to nobody? But not all churches. See, people are concerned about themselves. I don't know about y'all, but I'm concerned about the dope dealer. When I see that prostitute lady, I'm concerned about her. When I see my brothers and sisters strung out on drugs, ain't that right, Cheryl? We reach out to each other. Because I have seen deliverance in my neighborhood. If y'all looking at this video, all of y'all, I'm not going to call y'all names. Y'all all know who y'all are. And I thank God for y'all. And, and y'all have been delivered. And let the church say amen. But if you would have never got reached out to on these streets, how would you ever been reached? God Almighty. Jesus went after the sinners. He sat down with them. He went to the parties. They invited. Oh, hallelujah. It also let me know Jesus wasn't boring. Jesus wasn't no stuck up religious person like most of these religious folks are. Jesus could go to the party. Jesus could talk to the sinful woman. Jesus had a bigger problem with the Pharisees, the religious folks, the religious leaders. So are we even reaching out? Because he that went at souls is wise. How would Christ would have reached that woman at the well if he would have never talked to her? And remind you, my brothers and sisters, that Jews and Samaritans didn't even get along. Just like Christians and Christians don't even get along. Somebody catch that later on. We got all these titles and traditions and, and man-made stuff that don't have nothing to do with getting into heaven. God Almighty. Some of these first ladies are doing so much condemning because she ain't dressed right. She got a tattoo. She got too many children. She got this, she got that. But are you reaching out to that woman? Good God Almighty. We should all be ministering. Jesus said that this gospel, I'm fired up, man. I, I, oh, praise the Lord. This gospel must be preached. Like you said, big brother, little man, they let you know that it was a lot of gospels being preached. Just like nowadays, it's a lot of stuff being preached. But the question is, what are some folks preaching? I hear more prosperity messages than anything, but I don't never hear nobody talking about how prosperity has to do with your soul also. In Mark 16, Jesus charged his disciples to go where? Into the world and preach the gospel. I remember when Philip was preaching and teaching. Philip wasn't no bishop. Philip wasn't no pastor. Philip was a deacon. And see, we always think that, oh, the pastor is the only one that got to be reaching out. Let me tell you something. I see more folks reaching out than these pastors. He told his disciples, go into the world and preach the gospel because those who believe will be saved and have what? Everlasting life. Now, we know about the ones that don't want to believe. And if you just want to keep cold, cold out, rejecting God, then you pretty much condemned already because... You got to make up your mind that you're going to serve yourself or Satan. In Deuteronomy 30 and 14, the scripture tells us that the word of God is in the mouth of what? Every believer to do what? Speak out. It doesn't say some of the believers, but every believer. So if you are a child of God, who are you reaching out to? Are you speaking? It's also in the heart of every believer to obey. Obedience is better than sacrifice. See, a lot of people sacrifice for all the wrong reasons. The believer has come to show the world the picture of God, of who God is, and why do we serve him. But the problem is there's too many Christians living in the dark. I'm, I'm preaching. I, 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 it's too many Christians want to be, oh, I'm about my father's business on Sunday, but soon as Monday comes, I'm back to being a hoe. Oh, I'm back to being a drunk.
How is it that you want your spiritual life and your worldly life to look the same way? Let the church say amen. I know I done made a lot of people mad with this video, but this is love, tough love, and I have to spread this word of God. We have to be obedient. How can you reach people if you are not going to them? Let me use Lady D for an example. How can Lady D know what's wrong with JT if Lady D never reach out to me or I would never tell her what's wrong with me? How could Lady D reach JT if she just religious and condemning JT, telling me that everything I'm doing, you're going to hell? How could she reach me that way? So in other words, let the church say amen. Lady D have to reach out in the way that Christ reached out. And some people don't want a woman to reach out to them. Let me say it again. Because let me tell you something. If I was down and out and I'm, I'm, I'm living a crazy life and I'm fighting with myself because myself was my biggest problem. Do you think I'm going to care whether it's a woman or a man that reached out to me? How, boy, if it's Lady D, if I'm struggling and, and I'm fighting with my addiction and here comes Lady D telling me about the one who delivered her. Huh? I'm going to say, sister, preach on. Tell me about this God you serve. Oh, if he working on you and did them things for you, I want him to work in me the same way that he worked in you. God Almighty, let the church say amen. Are we reaching out? He that win it souls is wise. Y'all got to forgive me. I'm, I'm hyped up. I'm, 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 I'm fired up for God. God didn't tell me to be silent, to be weak, to don't have no kind of joy. I get excited about the word of God. Those who believe will be saved. But are we reaching out to them? Are we? If you never go outside of your church building, how will you reach the ones that's lost? That's why I say we just going to be real. Some don't change and some are not. But how will we ever know if we can help somebody if we don't reach out to them? Get the hell out of religion. God Almighty. I'm so sick of religion and tradition. It's destroying so much. When Jesus commanded his disciples to go, he gave them what? Authority over unclean spirits. See, my brothers and sisters, we got a lot of power, but I don't know why people don't think we got power. You don't even believe in what you pray for. See, I don't pray them same old, I call them weak prayers. Oh, Lord, I this, this, uh, I'm dealing with it now. I'm, I'm, I'm to the point now where whatever I'm dealing with, I, I don't I don't sit up and complain about what I'm going through. I tell my problems that I got a bigger God. That I got a God that can bring me, pull me out of whatever the situation is. I don't care what it is. God Almighty. That's why being obedient is better than and sacrifice. Too many people sacrificing for all the wrong reasons. I was trying to make this video short. I see I'm over 12 minutes, but I'm not going to apologize for the Holy Spirit. Let me calm down a little bit because I'm so fired up and I want to I want to make this video right. I want I want to just somebody might be looking at this video that's going through a lot and I'm going to bring some more encouragement and let you know that whatever you go through, it's not too hard for God and that he that win its souls is wise. I tell a lot of people what God has done for me. I tell people how I was and I tell people right now the struggles that I still have because I want them to know JT is not perfect. I want them to know that God is still working on JT and will forever be working on JT until JT gets into that spiritual body, that glorified body that Paul spoke about. See, we got to be doers of this word. That's why I said Jesus gave the disciples authority over those unclean spirits. He said, just like this, In my name ye shall cast out devils. You should be able to lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. But how can the sick lay hands on the sick? How can the blind lead the blind? Believers, we have to believe. If you can minister to a dying soul and, and he or she becomes alive unto Christ. And when I'm talking about dying soul, I'm talking about a dead spirit. Oh, blessed are the poor in spirit as I think about the Beatitudes. Let me leave it alone because that's a whole other video. There's so much I want to say in this video, but I'm trying to leave it alone. The demon-possessed person is delivered from demonic powers. 
So a lot of people don't believe in these powers, do they, Pop? Pop, I hope you're looking at this video because you got the power. You got all power. God has made the righteous believer to be the tree of life. Oh, we see this tree of life so much. We see the lamb so much. We have to understand what these symbols represent. The tree of life also refers to the tree that was originally where? In Eden. In Eden. When you go back to Genesis 3, and I believe it's, what is that, chapter 22, it says, and the Lord God said, the man has now become like one of us, knowing what? Good and evil. See, a lot of us know right from wrong, but we want to continue to do evil. It says, he must not be allowed to reach out his hand and take also from the tree of life and eat and live forever. See, we've been cursed from day one. A lot of people say, we, we ain't in no curse. Uh, that's your belief. Let me tell you something. This curse won't be taken off of us until the Messiah come back, until Christ come back. If you don't think you in the curse, you better take another look around. I always tell a woman, you, I mean, if you if you think about it from the beginning, if there was never sin, women probably would have had a baby with no problem, no pain. But since the sin, since the fall in the garden, we know what happened with Adam and Eve, that life has became very difficult. If you caught blog talk yesterday, last night, you would have heard me, the man, hitting on this. We must not be allowed to let this evil overcome us. Matter of fact, that same tree is referred to in the book of Revelation, ain't it, many man, as you talked about last night, I want to say, when you get around Revelation 22. It says that John was seeing so much in his vision when he was taken up in the spirit on the day of the Lord. He said, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as a crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. What street is that? What city am I talking about? He said on each side of the river stood, y'all know I love Revelation, each side of the river stood that tree of life. And that tree was also bearing what? Twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves was for the what? Healing of the nations. Winning souls, my brothers and sisters, is, is like bringing lost individuals to the tree of life. There is God's wisdom in this. As those souls who accept the message of the gospel, they will obtain eternal life. But to those who add and try to take away from the word of God, we know the answer to that. So he that win it, excuse me, souls, it's wild. I just had to come do this video because it was in my spirit. Because we too busy down in souls that a lot of people are not reaching out to them. People are winning, trying to win everything except salvation. But not all people. Most people trying to get all they can out of the kingdom, but yet and still they don't want to seek the kingdom. So with that being said, he that winning souls is wise, PP drawings. I remember you saying this a while back. Lady D, he that win its souls is wise. He or she, keep reaching out, keep your head up, and whatever you're going through, just smile and say, God got my back. Because there is nothing, once again, too hard for God. See, if you don't meet me, and you forget me, you ain't, you ain't lost the thing. But if you don't meet Christ and come into the knowledge of his holy word, you done lost it all. As I'm reminded of the Williams brothers, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody. A lot of people don't like when I say I'm just a nobody, but they have to catch that when I say that. Yes, I am somebody, but at the same time, Jesus said, call no man good but the Father. I'm just simply saying that I'm just a simple nobody. I'm just a regular old servant trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save anybody and let the church say amen and God bless you.